so welcome everyone to this the second webinar that we have in our bite-sized research data webinars. Today's one uh, webinar is on how to encrypt your research data. Uh, my name is Sean Lacey. I'm the university's research integrity and compliance officer. Last week, uh, Theresa Hearn, the meta, our metadata and research data librarian, outlined how to password protect our research data. And I suppose it, it, to a certain extent, this is an add-on to that, okay? Do we want to know, well, last week it was to show on how to password protect. This week it is how to encrypt. So just maybe to kind of see, look, what is the relationship between these two uh, aspects that we're doing? So when we look at password protecting, this is where our authorized users or anyone that actually has a password to our data will have access to our data, okay? So obviously having a, pa a password to our data is like having a lock on our door. Okay, and essentially to unopen uh, to get access to the data, we need a password or we need a key. Okay, and that's what that will, is what would have been covered in, in last week's uh, webinar, as in how to do it. This week we're talking about encryption. Okay, so in, when we look to encrypt, it is one level up. It is where you have a password, but there's also then kind of uh, encrypted or a hidden message. And the idea to this is. But you would have seen, you know, I mean, before you would have always kind of had maybe you know, not necessarily us on a daily basis or anything like this, but where messages could have been uh, shared, but the messages would have a hidden message within it. OK, and then you'd need to kind of have an idea to what a key is in order to kind of decode that hidden message or decrypt that hidden message. That is essentially the idea of encryption. So in order for us to kind of get access to data that might be encrypted, we actually need two things in that case. We need a cipher and we need a key or a password to actually get access to the data. So that's how the encrypt, and when we encrypt our data, it is one level up from actually doing a password protection, okay? It was mentioned in the pre the webinar last week that the idea, uh, the I suppose the, the, the practice of password protecting our data or encrypting our data, these are called out in our various policies. And in the previous webinar, I would have outlined these policies. Lydia will put, put the link into the policies into the chat. You don't need the, the, all those policies to be called out again in this webinar, but for information purposes, all those are uh, on the chat as well, okay? And with that then, really, it's just basically how to, so how to encrypt the research data. I'll hand over to Teresa Hearn, our metadata research data, data librarian, who will talk us through this. Over to you, Teresa. Thank you, Sean. Um, so we'll go straight into how to encrypt your research data. As we spoke about um, earlier, we've um, already run a session on how to password protect your data. Encryption adds uh, another layer of protection to this, namely that the data behind the password is non-machine readable and therefore extremely difficult to hack um, and impossible in most cases. So today we'll talk about um, going through the hierarchy of files um, by starting off with a basic um, encrypting a basic Word file, um, a basic Microsoft Office file, excuse me, and then we'll move on to encrypting a folder, then um, an entire drive, and um, following that, just a, a mobile drive, like a flash drive. Um, so first up is our basic Microsoft Office file. In this case, we'll just look at um, an Excel file for a data set. As you can see, this is actually already password protected. So this is what this looks like um, when utilizing the Microsoft encryption tool. We just open it up there. We apply that simply by clicking on file, then going to info, then protect workbook and encrypt with a password. Um, I'm just going to enter that password again in just in case. Um, and as you can see there, we click OK, and that's protected. Um, so what that looks like then is if we try and go into it, sorry, I just need to apply it. Um, if we were to try and go into this cold, again, it just uh, requests that password to lift the layer of encryption and to um, apply that encryption key. Okay, so if we just cancel that there and we close out of that. Um, so as I say, next up is encrypting a folder. Um, a, a folder encryption, um, I think the best option is to utilize an outside, out, an 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 outside um application called Seven Zip. 
Um, this is available at 7zip.org. However, it may be already downloaded onto your system by MTU. Um, but either way, um, it's it's easily available and easily applied. Um, so again, um, how are we actually encrypt a folder? Is if we go to um, just a particular folder, um, we right click on the folder, um, seven zip comes up there as an option. As I say, look, if it's not there as an option, just download it to your system. Um, it's MTU approved software, so um, there should be no issue. Um, then from there, we want to add to the archive. A couple of options here, archive format, the newest and most up to date, and therefore most protective is 7Z. Um, we also want to, um, for in this case anyway, delete files after compression. So normally the default is, is that your unencrypted file would also be available along with your encrypted folder. Um, so the best option, unless you're transferring that encrypted folder onto, say, a project partner's drive, a separate drive, or sending it by email, the best option is to delete that folder after compression. Um, and encryption in this case, and also to encrypt the file names um, within the folder. It just means that if there's any sensitive information in the file names, that they won't be visible once you have encrypted the folder as well. Um, I suppose, again, the, the default option is to look at, is to just have a visual of the um, encrypted folder um, and the the files within it will be unavailable, um, but their their names will be visible. So again, we want to we want to get rid of those for the highest level of protection. Um, I guess, and we want to apply our password, which again should be um adhering to best practice on that. We want a strong password, and um also along with this along with the the file protection the file encryption um if you do forget your password then um there is no way of of retrieving it unless you have utilized password management uh software or um you simply you just have to remember it um if you don't use that so we apply our password uh we click okay and as we can see um both our folder here on the left which is called um uh research um um project folder i believe um and all of the files within it have essentially disappeared from normal view and um, because they are now encrypted they're non-machine readable and they're only available to um us that have created the password and those that we have shared the password with um to open that encryption key. So if we just go out of this, and I will show you how to get back into it. Um, we do that by um, opening up our 7-zip file manager. So when you download 7-zip, um, the file manager comes with it. Um, so these are all our mirrored folders. Um, it's not going to be in there as because as we, we clicked the option to delete files um, after compression, so, um, however, it will be down here in a 7-zip format. So there it is, our research project folder, .7z. Um, and if we right-click on that, we go again to 7-zip, we extract here, um, it'll ask us for the password that we created. Click OK, and that becomes once again unencrypted and visible. Um, so, yep. So that's your 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 extra level of protection right there. That's your non machine readable um, encryption in action there, where we couldn't see it earlier. And there it appears again. Research project folder. Again, if we just go into our normal file setup, as we can see, our research project folder. And the files within it have once again appeared.
Okay, uh, so that's that's visible. So just go through that again. If we were to right click, go to seven zip, add to archive, um, and apply uh, the passwords that follow after. That is the 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 best and I guess one of the most recognized ways to encrypt an entire folder and the files within it. Okay. So moving on then. Um to encrypting an entire laptop. Um, and this is an image um, in this slide of my laptop every morning because BitLocker has been applied to it. Again, this is a Microsoft option. If you simply go to search on your, um, on your MTU issued device and you, uh, you search for BitLocker, um, just going to put that into the search box. Um, and you can see that that management locker comes up. Um, and that is what this application looks like. Um, in this case, I would need to turn off BitLocker. Um, if you don't have it applied, it would ask you to turn on BitLocker. Um, one big caveat with BitLocker, however, is that I would recommend that you actually get MTU IT to apply this to your laptop. The reason being um, is that obviously, once again, if you forget the password um, or if there's an issue with the password um, and you haven't utilized um, password management software or there's an issue with that, um, that the the information is then lost. There There is no way of retrieving the password. Um, uh, you know, I suppose that there, there is there is a again a personal system here, but if if that's on the, the encrypted laptop, then there there can be a danger that 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 it could all be lost. Mm -hmm. So um, IT have a system where if they apply encryption to your entire laptop drive, that they have a password management system. Um, they don't have individual access to it but they can they can uh, retrieve your encryption key and um access the information again um uh, while also of course being in charge of the the encryption within it it's it's just easier and um probably much better practice to delegate um any encryption of entire drives to to mtuit okay um and uh so yeah, I would um I would recommend applying it. It's just um it's easy to do. Um again, IT have full control of it, and um it just means that you're covered for um sensitive data protection in terms of uh in terms of laptop encryption if you ever needed to record that for uh, a research data management plan or for ethics approval. Um, you can you can literally cite that your um laptop that holds the the research data um that you have um is is encrypted in a recognized manner and an approved manner. Um next up then is mobile data drives, for example, a USB flash drive um or a a mobile um hard drive. And um in this case again it's 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 the BitLocker screen actually. That it's the BitLocker screen, and um. So there's just a section at the bottom about removable data drives, uh. And um, I might open that up live as well actually, uh. Here and I'm going to insert the USB. So I've just inserted a USB into the drive. I'm just going to um, not worry too much about that. Um, so for my USB disk, then it's telling me that BitLocker is off. And it gives me the option when I click on that to turn it on. So uh, that's just starting BitLocker. So um, this is a new uh, flash drive that I've just put into the system, so it might take a while. Um, but 
essentially again it look it's the same setup um bitlocker will ask you to apply a password um as you can see here so we'll just enter one that contains capitals that contains um symbols and numbers hopefully and obviously as we know the best one is to use more than one word as well um so if we just apply that password and um in this case it gives you the option to you know back up your recovery key it's not always foolproof but anyway um again you know especially if your entire laptop is encrypted and there was an issue with, with getting at that but in this case um it should be okay so i think the best option is to print the recovery key just to to microsoft print to pdf and then save that um just going to do that there um and it's just going to go into documents and just i'm just going to quickly write an uh, we're going to save that there um so that is my flash drive now encrypted i'm going to go to next um and in this case look we're just going to use the use disk space only to encrypt um but you can encrypt the entire flash drive um so again, look, that might take a minute there. Uh, we will move on um, just to save time. And um, yeah, so that's that's a flash drive. Um, I can tell you that this, so we got a question previously on uh, during the password protection session on um, whether you would then be able to utilize that flash drive in the printers in MTU if it was encrypted. And the answer is no. Um, so I tried it myself and the because it's encrypted, because all of the data within it is non-machine readable, um, and especially if the entire uh, flash drive is encrypted, um, the the printers just don't register it at all. It's, it's as if you've no um, USB stuck into the printer basically is the answer to that, um, such as is, is the way of printing right now in MTU. And um, so the only way to print from it is to actually remove the encryption uh, before putting it into an MTU printer. OK, uh, so that's that. Um, a similar process can also be utilized for um, uh, removable uh, data drives and um, removable hard drives. OK, so um, then we're just going to talk very quickly about um, encrypting items in transit. Uh, we will speak about this in more detail in the next session on um, storage and uh, sharing of uh, sensitive data um, and the best way to protect that. Um, I would recommend HEANET's file sender. It's provided by HEANET. It can also be utilized for non-HEANET partners um, in limited fashion, but it just means you have end-to-end -end encryption. Um, for any uh, sensitive data that you might be sending um, or any project data at all, actually. Um, so we'll speak about that um, in the next session as well. Um, but it's just something to be aware of. Um, and finally, I just wanted to show you um, what um, this data protection um, and encryption could look like within a data management plan. Um, which in in most cases uh, where funders are involved in in research, um, this is now a mandatory requirement. Um, so this is a Horizon Europe data management plan answered by researchers in the Royal College of Surgeons, um, and they just stated that um for data security and protection, uh, their project folders would be um encrypted in line with their, uh 
institutions encryption policy um, and also they would only utilize computers that uh, were encrypted um, to ensure that they were meeting all the requirements of their funder. Um, and um, this could also be applied to, to any, um, I guess, ethics applications um, or any other uh, funders' data management plan requirements or, of course, institutional um, data management um, policies. Um, so it's just simply saying that, you know, your your um your data is on um hardware or software that has been encrypted to to recognized standards okay so that is me done thank you very much for your attention perfect, perfect. thanks thank very much Trace. yeah that's perfect so just one or two uh questions there um the so yeah so there's one uh, one there uh, about would this seem like a reasonable process for working on an encrypted folder? So you unzip the encrypted folder, you mm -hmm. work on the folder, you add to 7-zip to re-encrypt, and then you delete the unencrypted folder. And then an additional suggestion would be to date each encrypted version and keep copies as an archive protection against data loss. Um, <clears throat> I, I, I would say... I would say yes. I mean, if 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 you absolutely need to be encrypting those those um those files and those folders, um, there's an example here of um. So I suppose during the processing of of information, you know, we're never very far away when we're talking about data protection. We're never far away from GDPR, um, and the the data that we need to protect is uh, it can be personal. Um, it can be financially sensitive um, or it can be, um, you know, health information and that's so, so sensitive information that we're talking about. And during the processing of that information, um, we also do need to, to have it have it protected. So, um, yes, I mean, that would that would absolutely protect that data in terms of encryption. But I suppose while you're working on it, if um, you know, I suppose added um added uh, protections can include that, you know, you're only utilizing a laptop that either yourself or designated team members have access to. Um, and you can absolutely list um that process that 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 um that you just mentioned there as being part of the protection as well. Um yeah, I mean if 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 that if that works if that suits the project if it suits the the work at the time then yes that it 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 does meet the requirements um i would say perfect thanks very much uh, happy to take a follow on from that now if you want as well um so the so then uh, another question then is if i have a file on an mtu sharepoint can i password protect it and then share a link um Yes, yes, you can. Um, I suppose you would need to look into, and and that is, you know, that 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 is, uh, you know, uh, uh, if you document that and you're happy that that, um, protects the the data from getting, um, from I suppose from the outside where where it absolutely shouldn't be, then that um then yeah that that's that's also a reasonable way of of protecting information I suppose um uh yeah I mean um I suppose if that's if that's within a team member on SharePoint that would that would have access straight away I suppose to that link as opposed to maybe emailing that link where where um I suppose you're just looking can any outside um can any outside interaction come into that um but if that's between um you know members that only have password access to that SharePoint anyway then yeah that 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 also seems reasonable to me yeah. Perfect. Thanks very much. And uh, I suppose just one question just actually for myself there, because the doctor, there isn't one in the chat uh, to uh, ask yet, is just when I look at the navigation to how you'd encrypt the Word file that you use there on your, your mm -hmm. slides, like Word, it, see, it uses the word encrypt and it uses the word password protect. It seems to kind of put it all together. 
So yeah. I'm just nearly, if I wanted to password protect a Word document, is that the same thing as actually encrypting my Word document? Is yeah. it the same process within Word, which I assume would be the same for Excel and other kind of uh, Microsoft Office uh, files? Is that, yeah. is that the case? It, it is the case, yeah. So it's it's essentially, it's it's a service provided for Microsoft Office products um, and you encrypt with a password. So as well as password protection, the data behind the data in the file is also non-machine readable. So it has been encrypted. Um, so it's been, you know, jumbled up or or however way you want, whatever way you want to look at it. But it is unreadable, but also protected with with a password and that password opens the the encryption that password is also the key to um unlocking the encryption if that okay. uh, and hence the overlap yeah. with with last week and today on on yeah. file, um protection that's absolutely fine well that's great um look if there's no other questions i don't see anything else coming up there in the chat so just maybe just to see where we are and where we're going next and if there's no other questions so where we are is today we were talking about how to encrypt research data so that's that done. And in two weeks time, so there's no webinar next week. So in two weeks time, we're going to look at how to store and share our research data securely. So, and that's where we're going next. Okay, so look on that. So thanks very much everyone uh, for participating. Thanks for the, the questions in the chat. Thanks very much to Trace, our research data metadata uh, librarian for uh, facilitating this session and for, uh, for Lydia to coordinating everything behind the scenes as well. So look, thanks very much everyone. That's it. Thank you.